Okay, so um, while I was taking a wee quick break there, I turned the hair dry on this for the first five minutes, just air drying it, turning it as I had the hair dryer on it. Then it's important that you let the clay kind of rest for a few minutes after that. So what I did is I then got another piece of clay and rolled it out with a rolling pin until it was about that thickness. I sandwiched the clay between two sheets of cloth and then just used a rolling pin until it was around that thickness. Using your template then, I cut out two ears and there should be a left and a right. And then I'm just going to put those aside to let them dry out slightly while I work more on the face of the hair. So I'm going to do the eye lids on the other side. Now, I, when I was drying it, I thought to myself, I'm not really happy that that eye isn't protruding enough when I have the eyelids on. Now I will be trimming those eyelids back a wee bit. So, when I trim them, the eyeball itself isn't protruding as much as I would like, but that's not a problem. You might find out yourself. So I'll show you how I'll correct that by just adding a wee ball of clay on. But I'll do the other eye first. As much as you can, try to be symmetrical. So I'm just trimming this. When I was trimming that, can you see how that was becoming more like an almond shape? That is not the way it should be. The first, it rises to its highest point at the first third, remember? So. So I'm just, because I cut that with the tool, just using a soft paintbrush, just barely damp to soften that hard edge. Okay. So now for the second eyelid. I'm going to do the bottom eyelid first. Pay attention to the straight line that runs from the corner of the eye through the nose corner of the eye. I need that I need that diagonal line to be in so that when I make the um the eyelids um so I can do it from here. Kind of feels really awkward doing it up at a height like that. Um, So you want one end to be tapered and you do you know this is your from the corner of the nose to the corner of the eye through to there. You want it to be leave a wee gap for a tear duct and then apply that to the crease, just nip that off. And you want the steepest curve to be in this, the lateral or the outside third, and then it to be a much more level curve. And also, you want it to be, can you see it better? So, you can, you want it to be 
be thin. Let's see. A thinner line. I'm going to go right to wider and then come in. A steep curve and a flat line. I will apply it. Okay, I'll just start above the LV diagonal line, up in a steep curve, and then try to. So a steep curve up to that first third and then more of a straighter curve to here. And just be very very careful that this top eyelid doesn't meet the bottom one. It should you know your diagonal line you have in there? Just leave it alone. So, I took a wee bit away. Maybe just dry that for a wee minute because I took a wee bit away from the other side and made it a wee bit flatter. I'll do the same. So, excuse me, this will only take a minute. I'm just with the hair dryer. I just did that until the shiny, um, the shine went off the clay because I want, because I use this tool to take the excess off the eyelid. On one side I'll do the same on this side. So what we need to check here is that they're level and I can see this one's lower. So what I'm going to do is just put my two thumbs in to the highest point that kind of third if you can see, can you see past my hand? I'm going to put my thumbnail in to there and then check they're level. So I'm just working to make these closer to being the same. Again, there's a wee bit more skill needed for this uh, make. 
but tomorrow morning I am going to post um, videos of a very simple me the owl and I also thought I'll maybe do one week hard one week easy with this Friday afternoon make as well so I think I wrote down I can't even remember off the top of my head I think originally next week I was going to make a pool donkey but I think instead I'll make a um, much easier version and um, it's quite cute actually it's a donkey looking over a stone wall so I will post you some photographs of what they look like and it's a really simple fun make this is just a wee bit more detailed but if you are struggling make it 2d even if you say say if you've got to this stage you think oh gosh I can't get the two sides the same or this is tricky do you know what to do if you cut and wire cut it in half and just work it one make it right and then you could frame it up as a totally separate piece make two two pieces out of it um and then as your skill levels increase um you can work up to three maybe three I'm just kind of just looking at the curve of the eyelid. Um, it's amazing how a wee bit too much clay in this area can make it look a wee bit grumpy. So I don't want this to be a grumpy hair. Right, I'll do that we see it. Right. Next piece. The hairs have quite a strong um eyebrow. Um so I have drawn that on your template. The next area we're gonna work on is this upper eyelid. So this is upper eyelid. So what I'm gonna do is it doesn't come right in. But it'll go from, from narrower here. Um, if you think of this being the bridge of the nose. Um, so this diagonal line is all nice and strong. So the diagonal line from the corner of the nose to the, your, the corner of the inner eye. If you think of that as being the bridge of the nose. Take a wee bit of that clay off to make that a different plane. So it's all separate. But you know you can see that that's a very separate plane and it goes from the corner of the eye to the corner of the nose. Um, so what I was telling you that was for this eyelid you want there this eyebrow rather you want this this plane to start at that line and then go up get wider and then I am there so I will just go from here we stroke them out And these kind of lip toes, just taking the clay away, line that up. Now 
and I want to see this you know from this line again it is in your your drawing but you should see that this line from the corner of the nose to the corner of the eye where this or this eyebrow starts um I want you to do like a diagonal sweep yeah so you can start to this in um do you have a center line you can go so do you have a center line so you can It's important to keep that center line so that you don't take too much from the other side um because when we come to work the other one we're going to if you keep that center line in it's easier to be symmetrical in what you're taking away so um sweeping up here and then on this side we're going to sweep down here on a diagonal plane so you can see that again. and then just from the corner of the eye I'm just going to move it so I have cut on this diagonal line and then I'm nearly sweeping up and over and then you can just soften that with the brush or you can leave the you know I like around the eye to be quite smooth and around here to be quite smooth but it's actually quite a nice effect if you keep your mark making in uh, as long as your marks are roughly in the direction of the hair um, that can be a nicer finish so I'll do that on the other side So you can keep checking that you're doing the same depth on both sides and you're working towards the centre. And you're just looking for the thickness of these eyebrows to be similar. Um, this one actually just needs a wee bit of clay put on the front here. And the other thing is, just watch that, um, again, I've made a sweep here that has um, created a feeling of expression that it's not really an expression after. 
and that will just soften that in. Okay, I might come back to the eyes, I'll see. I'm tempted to, you know, some, um, I'm thinking that they're not protruding quite enough, but I haven't finished doing the cheeks, so I'll leave them the way they are for now, and then check them after I've finished doing the cheeks. So with the, the cheeks, the fullest area happens kind of underneath the eyes here. This kind of shape. And it doesn't extend all the way down. Uh, it's on your template. So it does extend slightly here, but I know this is to be the fullest bit. And the this bit is actually be slightly um, almost underneath the corner of the eye. The fullest bit wants to happen right here. So I will just start taking clay with clay away. Right outside out. Again, I'll probably not smooth these lines much. So quite like a rough finish. Mm. I'll just take a wee bit of the oil away from that. So take a wee bit away at the top here because let's see if I'm set. I want this to go. Yeah, I want the eye lid to go down and then it to come out. So then I'll just start trimming away that. I'll just do that with wee rough strokes, sort of round thinking of the round shape of that jawbone but remembering that this area is the fullest The other thing is try not to make it perfectly, perfectly symmetrical at the end. You want to work earlier at this edge. You want it to be kind of rough. So you do want it to look like a ball stuck on. That's going to be what I'm trying to say. Um, Taking a wee bit of the volume off that, but I do want the, this area to be a wee bit smoother. So, I want to do the same with the other side. Um, so I know the, the fullest area to be here. I'm going to actually have to add a bit of that on there. Um, and then let's see. You can just put your template beside or over the top of your piece and I'll act as your guide.
So I know there's just just have to try and remember to to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. I added a wee bit on there because I knew um there's like diagonal sweeps from that eyebrow down to here forward to there. So when I did this sweep there wasn't enough clay there. So I added a wee bit on. So I've just taken away behind here so that this becomes the fullest part. And I'm taking away really from the corner of the eye. And this below this fullness, I'm taking some away here as well. Again, I'm, you know, using those diagonal lines from the corner of the nose and along there to guide me into this, this shape. Okay, um, just want to take a wee bit away here. It's a wee knot because um, it just helps to define the nose a little. Um, it just gives that slightly more kind of a Roman nose look to them. So there. Okay. Okay. Next stage we'll get the we'll go to the ears. Um it should be clear from your template where you're putting your ears on. So um following the jawline round. And then that sweep, you know the diagonal line that goes from nose to corner of the eye and then up. So, where that diagonal line and the sweep of the jaw across, take about the centre there. So it goes in that top quarter of that line. So on your template you have um, the size of the ears. So cut your ears out and they want to be about this thickness and then wrap them round like a round tool. And um, just to give you that curve, it's just easier. Um, just to get you that curve. And straighten it out from, put it on the surface and straighten the back of it up a wee bit. Just you don't want it too lumpy and bumpy. Um, and whenever you're working with the ear, you want the, the root of the ear or where you, the ear is going to be attached to the head to stay thick. Then you can start to... Just pinch out the edges. So you're only pinching out the edge, you're not pinching out that centre that's remaining nice and strong for you. And when you're pinching, you're just softening that edge rather than having a square edge. And there's a right and a left with the ears. The straightest, shortest, um, Ed goes to the inside and then 
Uh, this will be a longer, more kind of curved edge. Like, and you can just put a wee bit more texture on by smoothing up the blend. My hairs, um, when you're putting on your ear, you want to be able to. You can hold you want to be able to keep um, this round and there's almost like a tube of a base of the ear where those two edges come into the centre and join. So what I'm trying to explain is the ear, the ear doesn't flare out right at the base of the ear. There's almost like this tube um, area before it flares out. I'll keep that in. Um, skewers are really handy at this point, or coffee stirs. Do you remember the coffee houses they used to be open? Oh, oh, oh. So a wee skewer or coffee stir um, is really useful just supporting the ear in the meantime. And if you have created the ear around the pencil, you'll be using the pencil to um, attach the ear so I know where the ear is going to be attached so with a knife with a knife but if you don't have a knife one of these um so I'm going to just make a diagonal cut and you want that diagonal to be roughly the diagonal of the head cut that off now, this this crease um, of the ear where the two sides have joined together in the middle, depending on where the ears of the hair can swivel. So you can have the ears pointing quite forward. Um, or you can have the ears can be turned right line behind. Can they can swivel quite a bit. Um, but when you're swiveling the ear, what I'm trying to explain is that this this join where those two sides join, this must swivel as well. So you can't have this join facing forward if your ear is pointing backwards or if your ear is side on like that the crease should be um side on as well so i am so to join your ear onto the the head of the use a pencil kind of push it in so that if you were just doing this with your hands, it'd be very easy to um, to squash that tube of the ear, and you don't want that to happen. So, actually, do you know instead of skewers a pencil would do quite well? You know, if I was using, I think so, just use a pencil. There we go. I obviously you take the pencil out after it starts to dry. And so we'll keep it. And you should be able to see from your template that the ear is the same length as the, the nose to the back of the head. Now obviously if you're doing an Irish hair it'll be shorter. You have a stumpier ear but um, that gives you And just cut that off and then and when you're doing the ears hairs quite often if you think of this edge being fairly straight to about here quite often if I do this I'll just see quite often the tip will bend over slightly and this will you can just put a few wee creases in there 
Uh, it just it'll have a straight edge and a creased edge. And um, if you want to dry out quicker, you can stick the hair dryer on it. So I'm looking at like a tube. And what I'm doing is when I'm joining this on. I go front and back. Do you know the jawline that's here? The aim for there. So the muscle goes down. And it really should be completely there. You know, any extra clay should disappear about the level of this. So if I want to turn that here, I have to make sure that crease turns as well. And then just do the same on the other one. So the shorter length is the center. I'll put it around this jaw. And then I'll take it up to curve. And you pull it out. That just kind of starts it off that curve on the curve here. And I just want this to be nice and straight. Now when I'm saying straight, I don't mean a straight line. I don't I just mean I don't want it to be up and down too much. I want it to be either, you know, a bit of a curve, but not too lumpy and bumpy looking. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the tip now. And then just gently squeeze out the edges. Give it a nice. You see, if when you're doing the, the squeezing out the edges, do you see if you, like I turned it around that way just to double check and I can see it's, oh, it's a bit lumpy bumpy. See a large pair of scissors. So that inner, that inner side, if you want it to be fairly straight, you can just trim it with the scissors. I think if you go in to try and trim it with the knife when it's soft like this, just move the clay about too much. Texture marks just by smoothing that out. So I'm going to almost take a leaf and um, going from the center V and out. Center V and out. And I like a bit of And wrap it back around joint. And just cut it diagonally. See what you a wee tip for cutting a diagonal if you're not sure the angle of the diagonal, if you hold your knife or your tool here and then put your ear the way you want to and just slide it across so she gets an angle. And where the ear goes for the jawline round diagonal line that goes from nose corner of eye and the end there. So I'm going to join that jawline just a little bit like that. Oh, well now I can see that this ear is just right here so that's, that's telling me that this jawline needs to be there. So let's go ahead and Pencil back, rubber it in down first of all, and then use the rubber around the tools to make it more round. And apply this 
Spanish district crowding. Um, so I think it's a really good idea to check how the other drawers are as well. I think this is a little bit longer. This would be the longer, so what I can do is just give the scissors to her. I don't want this squished at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then this. So I'm just stroking from either side of the ear and then behind that jawline. And I need to make sure these ears are level at the back and level at the front. I want to remember this is the straight edge. This can be the kind of wrinkly one that tips it and goes over that side. So then you just really want to think, what do you actually that I want the two ears to be? Because this ear is, this hair is going to be... Uh, I can just make it up as you go along. One of the things, <laughs> one of the things to bear in mind is what I'm doing at this point is I'm thinking, what pose do I want this hair to be in? So this is a good point to assess, right, what side of this hair do I like the best? I think I actually like, uh, like this side better. So I'm going to have my hair, instead of looking straight ahead, it's going to be looking slightly to the left. So I want all my hair to be pointing forward. And under that crease where the joint is, I think it's be pointing forward. And then this other area is going to come to the side. So it's the hair is aware of what is happening behind it and off to the left. So. And then you can just start blending it a wee bit. Mm -hmm. I have to keep it quite rough. Um, I'm going to be firing this hair, so I'm going to need to hollow it out. I can't do that today because the clay is too soft. I've only just made this. But if you're making from stonework clay and you're going to fire it um, yourself, or even if you're making from air dry clay and you just want to take some of the, the weight out of the clay, um, you need to think about where's the best place to make the cut. Um, what I'm just thinking is I just want to make a sweep in front of the ears there. Um, and then you also want the ears to be distance apart from the centre line. So, um, if you're making it at home, you really wouldn't want to be doing more than more than this in the one session. So I will draw the line. Oh, the other one I've left to go. So I'll we'll work on the lower jaw in a minute. And Oh yes, I was saying about where I where I will hollow this, where I will section it, 
had to hollow it out. So uh, if you spent a whole lot of time getting those features the way you want them, are near enough. You um, don't want to be making your cut through the, the centre and also you don't want to make your cut through somewhere where there'll be pressure when you're when it's drying and shrinking slightly. So um that's all right again just you know you'll have more time at home so you can uh, work more of these planes. You should be able to see the planes from the template. So, okay, uh, when I come to temp or section this, where I will section it that will do the least harm is on a diagonal line from behind those big brows um, through the head to about there. And just lift this piece off and hollow it out to about the thickness of a, your, your wee pinky finger. Um, hollow it out. Um, Cross hatch and slip and add it together. So I'll put that down. So, you see me lines of that? I'm getting ahead of myself. You can put wee scratches in it in the clay once you have hollowed it out and then joined it together again. So that's why you want the clay to be at least that, so the thickness of your fingers, so that if you're scratching into it and making marks, and also. I tend to always um, just do a wee bit of fine tuning of the details once I've hollowed it out and brought it back together again. So I am going to stop this part um, to video here. And then what the next stage of this would be making the neck. And I will just do that. So I'll make the neck that I'll be adding on underneath that. If you have loads and loads of clay, I would make the neck solid, which is what I'm going to do. Because if you were to make it as a slab, you will need to have a support for the head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the support I have, uh, I was going to use for this, actually has another sculpture on it. Let's say you had an empty wine glass or, or a wine bottle, or a full wine bottle. Um, I think it's going to be called... first and this is almost like a guide hole um, and also if you have a wee bit of cling film put the cling film over it um, just so that It's just really so that it's easier to get off. So what will you see? Can you see my hair? Can you see my so I have my hair. I'm just being careful where I hold it. I'm just going to pop it onto that wine bottle. Okay, and then when, it, when it's on the wine bottle, you can go, right, okay, what pose do I want this hair to be in? Well, I know I want it to be looking slightly there. I think I want it to be looking up there. So you can just, you know, that is the beauty of clay. You can animate it until you go, that's right, or no, it's not going right. Mm. Do you want a slight upward inflection of the jaw? So I'm going to make it somewhat. 
but um, if you're making it, the, the most economical way is to make it from a slab. So in the same way as you roll out clay for the ears, if you roll out um, a slab for the neck, I give you a rough temp at the bottom of the, the template burial view in the ears is a rough guide to the size of the neck. So I'll just grab it and put this on and take it off again so maybe get on to this. So this is really just a good tight. So the 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 reason I give you a temp a template for the neck it's just to guide you that you don't end up doing a really, really long neck. So, I'm going to cross hatch and slip the top surface. And I'm not even going this way, I'm just squeezing this to this shape. Yeah. Yeah. And then, as a good guide for nearly all animals, let me see if I turn it completely to the side. Where do you attach the neck? If you think of the plane of the eye and come straight down, you want the bottom of the neck to start about there. So I'm going to put this on and add that on. So when you add that on, you kind of want it to be in underneath that jawline. You don't want to do, uh, lose your jawline when you're doing this. Mm. Is I want to cut this about here on a diagonal because I am going to display it on a stand. Next week I'll talk more about different ways of building stands and actually um, different ideas for stands. So I like the idea of the neck and the brim up. Oh, so that's a bit more than that. So actually the wine bottle is probably better with a wee bit of liquid in it. Um, you can refill it with water. Um, so just join this together. What I do want is, you see from that jaw, the, the ear, nearly from the front of the ear, around that jawline, and this line to come just so that there's a muscle here. Take that in. And yeah. I could join on that, but don't have your, your neck any further forward than the 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 plane of the eye. So the joints about there. And then, you know, again, this is a good opportunity to look for S bends. So a nice curve in, out, and then round again. So, and I just emphasize that look. So round. So 
um, different ways to put texture on. I do have separate videos on. Oh, well, there's lots of ways to tidy up late doing this still, but anyway. I have separate videos on making texture with hay and chopped grass and slip. Um, you can add texture by doing these rough lines. And also, um, what can be quite nice is also add on a few bits and pieces of, you know, quite rough lines. Have them, you know, this is quite a the hair here is quite rough, so I'll just I'll create a wee bit extra texture. So I'll put my bits on. I just be careful that I always like to see in this bit that I've added on here. I made sure that there's a good attachment here and a good attachment here, and let there be a bit of a gap either side. So that if there's air trap behind, it can escape. But you can pull that away with this and just build up texture. Just makes it a wee bit more interesting. Okay, so it still needs a bit of fiddling about and tidying up, but Hopefully that has given you enough information for you to... Oh, do you know what I didn't do? I didn't do as wee mice. What do I say? So I haven't got this all finished because it's obviously it needs... Um, where's this plain? This jaw. Uh, do you know what? That's nearly too red. So, oh, I'm up. So, come on quickly. Right, so too many. So, I would just do a wee, just like that. Right. Make sure the lower jaw is slightly narrower. There we go. There we go. Oh, so there's an arrow. Oh, so I hope you have fun creating hair. Um, feel free to make them in 2D to begin with and then um, try 3D. But I'm. Let's leave it work there. No, that's to come up here. No. I look forward to seeing your photographs and see how you get on. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.